Welcome back to our channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Cassidy the Card Slinger and I have such a treat for you guys today. Um, this deck I found while I was perusing Etsy and uh, it's an independently published deck. I had not heard of it. I hadn't seen it anywhere. Um, so I quickly picked it up as soon as I found out what it was. This is the Animated Movie Tarot. The Animated Movies Tarot. So these are Disney inspired fortune telling cards created by Wisdom by KK. So if this is still available, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link below so you can check out their shop. It did take, so I'm on the west coast of Canada. I think it took almost two months for it to get to me um, from, from where it had come from in the world. But anyway, uh, what I do wanna do here is quickly do a flip through of all the cards. I won't say anything. So if you do just wanna see what this deck looks like, um, you can just watch the beginning of this video. And then what I'm gonna do is go back through and share my thoughts about how it reads, um, what I think about the, the cards and all that good stuff. So um, before we get started, I will just show quickly that it came with this, um, I don't, this isn't velvet, uh, suede maybe? A uh, little, little drawstring bag. It didn't have a box, but it did come in this bag and the deck was shrink wrapped. Um, and just a quick size comparison, just to show you as well before we dive in. So the Smithwaite Centennial Edition. So yeah, it's a little bit thinner, a little bit shorter. Um, still a good size card, but a little bit smaller than your traditional um, size Rider weight tarot card. So um, without any further ado, let's get started. But yeah, this is the back. It's a, a nice, kind of reminds me of like the Little Mermaid sort of scales vibes on the back here. Um, but yeah, like I said, I will I will tune out here and just do a flip through of the cards and then we will we will go through them and talk about them. Maybe zoom this in a little. There we go. As we're about to dive into the miners here, um, very interesting what happens. We'll see here in the in the court cards.
All right, so there is our, our first look at the cards. The first thing you'll notice is that none of the faces are drawn in or animated. Um, so I have actually found, and as someone who myself is a massive Disney fan and has seen most all Disney movies more than, you know, 10 times each, um, I find it very interesting what what happens with the cards. If you're someone who the cards will move for or they will start to talk to you or they kind of will animate for you before your eyes, um, that's a real plus side of this deck uh, in that you kind of, sometimes their faces will, will fill in for you. Let me zoom this back out. Okay, so now, um, but yeah, it's neat. So, uh, you know, a lot of decks I've done in the past, I say you can read on the facial expressions alone. Well, this one, <laughs> you got to fill in the blanks. So next thing I want to talk about, the kings. The kings are all couples, which I think is really, really neat. Um, they all talk about, you know, relationally how these, these two couples are in each of these positions. Um, and then the other card that did that, that was the, I believe the emperor is another couple as well. So it's very interesting that our, you know, more overtly masculine cards. Yeah, and here's our emperor. Um, they are they are couples. They are not <laughs> they are not a single male figure, which I found very very neat um, and quite interesting of this deck. So okay, I got I've got so many thoughts, and I what I think I want to do is maybe go through each card individually and just kind of talk about how I feel about the choice for it. Um, but before I do that, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was the the keywords there on the bottom of the cards. So for me personally. I don't like keywords on my cards. Um, I, <laughs> I I don't particularly like the cards to say anything other than the, the title. And even sometimes cards without a title are great. Um, but you'll notice as we go through and has, as we just saw on the flip through that every single card has, um, you know, two, two keywords uh, for what that card can mean and what that card can signify. Um, but you'll notice as well that in the reverse position, we, you know, now have a fully upside down image and then you don't have access to that. Which I've seen decks before, if they have little keywords, they'll have something else written on the reverse. Um, but that is not the case here. So, okay, um, we're going to now go back through the cards and I got, I've got lots to say. Great, so what I've decided to do here is I've grouped all of the cards into different movies, different shows, um, different appearances that they have in Disney films. And then we're going to go through the different categories that show up. Um, so a lot of the characters, as you saw, were repeated. And some some shows or characters only have a single appearance in a single card, whereas one movie has nine cards and two movies have eight cards. So this is very exciting. Um, but we're going we're gonna to just start by going through the ones that only have one each. So let's get started. This is really in no particular order. Um, so the judgment card here, I think this is great. We've got Robin Hood and I think, you know, well, well done. Um, <laughs> I really like that, that for that card. I think that is a great choice. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just go through these. Yeah, not really in a particular order. Next one here is we have Puss in Boots as the Page of Swords. Um, curiosity and Restlessness are the keywords that we have here. And um, I, I would agree with that placement. I think those are really well. I'm not gonna just go through these in terms of saying, I agree or I disagree. <laughs> or at least I'm gonna try not to have that be the focus of, of this discussion. But anyways, um, these are our, our single appearances. So here we have um, Lady and the Tramp for the Nine of Cups, Pleasure Satisfaction. I think that's a really, in a very, very neat way. Um, and the, the happiness that those two characters have in that film, I think that's a beautiful representation of the Nine of Cups. Uh, here we have the Ten of Pentacles for Bambi. Um, that's a movie I've never seen in its entirety. So it's, you know, like that episode of Friends where <laughs> Phoebe's mom won't let her watch the the end of movies that are sad. Or the beginning, I guess, in this case. Um, I've never seen that movie in its entirety. So that, that card I can't necessarily speak to. The Hangman, we have Dumbo for Sacrifice and Abandonment. That I would agree with. The beginning of that movie is very, very sad. Um... You know, he, he was a little abandoned elephant. Um, so I think that's a really perfect fit. Here we have Moana as the uh, Five of Cups. Now, for me, in this particular deck, I if you're going to give Moana a card, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I could think of a number. And I mean, a lot of these characters could go in a lot of different places. Um, 
and and a lot of these cards as we kind of go through you'll see that the, a single character has a number of different cards so you see different facets of that one character which is great um, but to put her as the face of disappointment and loss so that's another thing I want to point out that this you know it's not necessarily a Rider Waite style deck um, but what it has is these these little keywords really do point to the Rider Waite Smith traditional meanings so if you see a picture of Moana and you have disappointment and loss I mean, if for that being the only time that she shows up in the deck, I might have done that myself a little bit differently um, because for me, she's a she's one of my favorite Disney characters and I really love her, her whole storyline. Uh, so here we have Simba and Nala as the Nine of Pentacles, which is very sweet. Again, we see another couple relationship here. Um, we have Pocahontas as the Three of Swords for a lot of reasons. I think that's a really excellent choice for that card. Um, both for for the what, what was presented in the film and then more about the the inspiration behind the the girl um, who was the uh, the character of Pocahontas was based on in the film um, so these last two cards I didn't know what they were <laughs> I had to look them up this one the nine of wands I thought when I saw her so I thought that this was Princess Jasmine in um Aladdin, where Jafar turns her into, puts her in that, you know, the, the slinky red outfit, and then she gets stuck in the upside down, um, what's it called? Egg timer. Uh, that was what I thought. But this is apparently Elena of Avalor? Aval Elena of Avalor? I think I'm saying that right. Um, it's a new TV Disney show, and I have never seen it, so that's who this is um so i can't really comment on that one too much and here's the world card i'm not sure what this either to be honest when i saw it i thought that was christopher robin from winnie the pooh but i did a reverse google search and it looks very similar to the image of the little prince which i do not believe is a disney film um and these are you know the rest of these are very noticeable disney characters so other than those two which i'm not entirely i'm I, looked her up. She's a, I know who this character is. I'm not entirely certain who that world card is, but nonetheless, I think it's a very, very beautiful image. So let's get started on the pairs. So where we see either someone or one movie twice. So we'll start, I guess, in no particular order, but he, hey, here's the fool. So we have um, Pinocchio, who is the fool for Innocence Wonder. He's also the page of wands, optimism, passion. I love those. <laughs> I think that's, that's a really excellent choice for both of them. Um, and I think, you know, especially the innocence aspect of Pinocchio as the fool, um, very excellent choice. So we see those two there. Um, then here, so from the Alice in Wonderland world, I can zoom these in while we're doing, whoops. <laughs> uh, there we go. Excellent. So we have Alice herself as the Page of Pentacles and the uh, Mad Hatter as the Ten of Cups. That's fantastic. I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. Um, and if you haven't seen it, we did a video, myself and Sharon and Mandy, where we all have different Alice in Wonderland decks and we brought them and did a comparison of three different Alice decks. It's on our channel, you can check that out. Um, but yeah, so those are the two from Alice in Wonderland. Then we have <laughs> our beloved Mickey Mouse, where we see him as the magician, perfect. Sorcerer Mickey, you can't get better than that in my opinion. I think that's the perfect choice for that card. And we have it as the Six of Cups with him and Minnie uh, healing and restoration. I love those images. I think that's very well done. Okay, and then we have um, Brave. So uh, Princess Merida from Brave. Um, yeah, so she's, she's the Chariot and the Eight of Wands, which I think, you know, she had to be the Eight of Wands <laughs> being the archer of the Disney world. It was a, an excellent choice there. And I, you know, another thing I'll just point out is when we see similar or the same, in this case, characters showing up, how that plays out in a reading, um, it's very interesting because it gives, it ties two cards that maybe wouldn't necessarily have things so much in common in, a, in any other deck. Um, it ties them together in a very different and a very unique way. So I'll talk a little more about how this deck reads at the end. Uh, so here we have from the Jungle Book, we have Baloo and Mowgli, and then Mowgli on the other side. So the Seven of Wands and the Knight of Swords uh, for this pair. Yeah, I mean, uh, for this particular image, um, 
and and the words that we have here you know if I had I removed those words I probably wouldn't get those keywords from that image but I again can see from the storyline kind of where they're pulling that narrative from um, and as the Knight of Swords that's a, it's just really cool right like to put these different characters that you know and love into these different cards uh, so here we have the princess and the frog so Tiana um, beautiful I adore this moon card I think that's, that's fantastic I think that's really really well done um, and for the eight of cups here as well and again so we have wariness and restlessness which um, personally in my study of, of the cards I wouldn't say that those two keywords are necessarily the the ones that come to the forefront with that particular card but a lot of what that card represents to me, I think she's a, a really excellent fit for that card. Um, so here, then we have uh, Hercules and Hades as the strength card and the devil card. So this I'll point out is the only, so here, you know, traditionally the strength card with the, the woman and the lion or the force uh, card as well. It's, it's a feminine type strength, but here this is <laughs> brute force Hercules type strength. And this is, I think, I do believe the only, I guess, masculine centered card that only has one male figure in it. The rest of them, like I said, we went through the kings there, all have couples. Um, fantastic. And I mean, the devil for <laughs> Hades. <laughs> I mean, the guy had his own agenda for sure, but I, I'm a huge fan of the Disney villains. So excellent choice there as well. Um, here we have Rapunzel from Tangled, who is both the Eight of Swords and Justice. Yeah, I mean, again, you, you kind of sit with these narratives because I might not have personally put her as the first Disney character in my mind for the image of justice. But the more I sit with that and the more, you know, you, you dive in with her story, I think that's perfect. And of course, with the Eight of Swords literally being trapped in a tower, that works very well. So those are all the pairs that we have. Now we're going to dive into the triplets. So here from the Peter Pan storyline... Um, these are the cards we have. So Ten of Swords as Captain Hook, the star as Tinkerbell, and Peter Pan himself as the Knight of Pentacles, which is <laughs> traditional Knight of Pentacles, you know, maybe a slow mover or could be even stagnant, whereas Peter Pan certainly has a, a different mode of movement about him. Uh, Tinkerbell is the star. I couldn't have done that one better myself. I think that's perfect fit. And the Captain Hook is the Ten of Swords, failure and collapse. Perfect. Um... <laughs> very, very well done, especially given the ending of that particular storyline. So here uh, we have Mulan in these three cards. So she is the Three of Wands, the Ten of Wands, and then Mulan and her man. Um, yeah, so the, the Four of Pentacles, the Stability, Security. Again, we have that couple relationship, and I think that's a very beautiful way of putting that. Having her as the Ten of Wands, Responsibility and Burden. I, especially, you know, in <laughs> the storyline, I mean, that, that fits so, so well. And her as the three of wands as well for that creativity, that expansion, and in so many other ways, her character for that three of wands, certainly in its, it's more dynamic and active aspect of her, her character, I think are really, really key for that particular card. Um, here we have, oh no, this is four. Yes, okay, so that's the only the only time that we have um, three. Let me zoom this back out a little bit. Bloop. So here we have the cast of Frozen, or at least a few of them. Make sure that's focusing okay. Cool, so yeah, we have beloved Olaf here as the Wheel of Fortune with destiny and destination. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the guy is a total goof and a fantastic character, which puts a very, I mean, the Wheel of Fortune can certainly be a positive card, but Olaf as the Wheel of Fortune, that just really f floofs up and I guess inspirits that that card in a very different way. But I like it. I, I love Olaf and the Frozen film is one of my favorites as well. Um, and again, so here is a perfect example of what I was talking about with Moana, where I was disappointed to see her as the Five of Cups. If this was the only time we saw Anna here in the Five of Pentacles with awareness and worry, um, again, had, had we not had the little keyword at the bottom, I wouldn't have necessarily associated these cards in particular with the 
Rider Waite traditional um, meanings of the cards. But because we have these keywords here, it kind of takes you there. <laughs> so we do see her here with Elsa, her sister, in the Three of Cups, which I think is a really beautiful, beautiful um, connection for that card, that sisterhood, that bond that they have, that very complex relationship. And then we have Elsa here as the Three of Pentacles. Uh, yeah, we did you see her build her castle and her dress and her, <laughs> you know, really, really well done with those cards. Here, okay, so this is this is an honorary, an honorary grouping of four, um, and also the reason I bought this deck. So my favorite Disney, well, favorite Disney princess for sure, but possibly my favorite Disney character is Princess Aurora here or Sleeping Beauty, and my favorite tarot card is the Queen of Swords. So when I was looking through the images of these cards and I saw my favorite character as my favorite card, that made me push the buy button immediately without looking further into the deck. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely perfect. And Maleficent here is the death card. Also just so, so, so well done. And I say this is an honorary grouping of four because I believe this is Sleeping Beauty's castle here, um, but it very well could be Cinderella's. It's not necessarily one castle or the other based on the image we see here. Uh, but here is our, our grouping of four from the Sleeping Beauty storyline. My childhood favorite. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. And his beloved characters. So, uh, yeah, we've got Pooh Bear himself as the Four of Swords, Restoration and Break. Uh, you have Eeyore as the Hermit card, Tigger as the Seven of Pentacles, which putting the word patience on Tigger makes you think <laughs> a little bit. You know, that's a very high energy character. And then the Four of Wands community celebration with the, with a group of them together. I think that's absolutely perfect. Um, I, I absolutely love Winnie the Pooh, and I'm happy to see that there's four cards here representing them. And I will just say, you know, if we're if we're going with the whole worry element of the Five of Pentacles, which isn't always my go-to worry card, you know, Piglet maybe? <laughs> our, our representation of, you know, a lot of anxiety with that card. So anyways, here is our Pooh Bear collection. Okay, and I believe this is our last group of four. I think it is. So here we have the first full-length animated feature film, Snow White. Yeah, so as we kind of talked about before, the Emperor card is them as a couple, and uh, it's her on her own as the Empress. The Seven of Cups with the Seven Dwarfs, <laughs> that is such a dynamic card because each of them has so much of their, you know, so much to offer as their own, in their own right as characters. So, you know, with Dopey on the top, it's it's fantastic. Uh, also, with the evil queen as the high priestess, um, that was the other card that right away made me make my decision. Uh, I mentioned before, I'm a huge Disney villains fan as well. And um, between uh, the high priestess being obviously the evil queen here, and then Maleficent being the death card, just fantastic. Um, I'm really, there's a, there's actually, if you have not heard yet, there is a Disney villains tarot getting released this summer. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that, because I will probably have it and do a flip through as soon as I get it. But that is our next grouping. Uh, yeah, okay, so now we're into into five. I don't know if this will fit. I may have to zoom out a little bit. I will. Oop, there we go. All right, so from the Cinderella storyline... Awesome. So we have the King of Pentacles being her and her prince, as well as her, you know, Cinderella herself being the Queen of Pentacles. Um, Six of Pentacles is, you know, when she she's wearing her dress that she wanted to go to the ball in and it wasn't nice enough and they absolutely tore it on her. But just such a, a, a kind natured and beautiful person that she was. Um, it's, you know, she's, she's just so incredibly kind. She was kind to everyone, every person, every animal. Um, I, I think that's a really excellent suit for that particular card. But the Two of Pentacles being, oh my gosh, what are these two's names? Uh, Gus Gus is this one. Uh, okay, this is either Jack or Jacques. Um, Jacques and Gus. Yes, okay. Two of Pentacles. 
and the Two of Wands for the whole bippity boppity boo scene. So great. <laughs> really, uh, I really, really like this deck for so many reasons. I just think it's so beautiful. Um, okay, now we're getting into our our biggest categories of cards that we see here. Um, so when I first flipped through the deck, I thought, wow, there's a lot of Little Mermaid here. And, you know, especially too, because I, I we have the mermaid-esque type background here. I hope that we can fit all of these in. Might have to zoom back out a bit. Okay. So, yeah, we've got her. Uh, yeah, fabulous. Tuck these all in. Great. So Ariel herself, she is the Four of Cups. She is the Sun. She is Temperance card. She's there in the Lovers, and she's there in the Two of Cups. Um, my <laughs> when I first went through this, I was, I, I you know, I'm gonna be honest. I was disappointed to see that the the couple chosen for the Lovers card was also the couple's cho the couple chosen for the Two of Cups. Um, especially because, you know, Disney with its fairy tale romance and the number of relationships that we see possible, uh, I might have liked to see different characters uh, represented. But at the same time, if both of these show up in one particular reading, again, like I said, with, with the repeating cards or the repeating characters, it does give a very cool link to, to those particular cards. Uh, so we have Ursula here as the Five of Wands and we have her father, King Triton, as the Hierophant. Um, but yeah, I mean, assigning her, you know, Ariel herself to the Temperance and the Sun card, um, like I said, I, there's, there's such a massive variety of Disney characters to work with and use. Um, in my, my personal opinion, I might have liked to have seen a little bit more diversity of characters used, um, rather than her being repeated so much. But nevertheless, Ariel is a fantastic character. I really, really love The Little Mermaid. Um, love seeing Flounder here as the Ace of Pentacles. I think this, you know, all of these cards, aside from there being so much from this one film, um, I really like, like what has been chosen. Yeah, so this is our Little Mermaid cast and crew with her eight cards. Then we have, oops, with our last, uh, our next, there's two, like I said, there's two with eight cards. So Aladdin is the next one. <laughs> okay, try and center these so you can kind of have a glance at them all at once. Great. So this one, I mean, yeah, there is certainly... I don't know, more diversity of, of the characters used. Not necessarily because you see a lot of <laughs> repetition in this half corner, but Genie is the Six of Wands. I'm surprised that's not the Nine of uh, Cups, you know, being the, the traditional quote wish card. Uh, but anyway, I think Genie is fantastic. And Jafar there is the Five of Swords. Perfect. Um, and Abu being the Page of Cups. I think that is so sweet. Uh, and yeah, so here we do see this is interesting. Because it, in this particular case, we have the King of Cups being the pair, we have her being the Queen of Cups, and then the Knight of Cups is then also Aladdin. So he is the Knight of Cups, and the pair of them is the King of Cups. The pair of them is also on the Six of Swords here and the Seven of Swords. This is fantastic, though. So this was, the you know, obviously the scene where he is Prince Ali Ababwa coming to her balcony and pretending he's someone that he's not. Bang on. Excellent. <laughs> Very well done. And Six of Swords being that that travel card um, in this, you know, travel by magic carpet. Very, very well chosen. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would personally, like if I was making a deck myself, would probably use different characters for each of these. But again, I really think there's something very interesting about the kings being a couple rather than it just being a particular um, character. So it's, yeah, it's neat that the whole suit of cups is from the, the cast of Aladdin. And our very last, any guesses? <laughs> Do you, are you picking one that is missing? We have nine cards from Beauty and the Beast. Here we go. Put an extra one in this row up here. All right. So here we have our layout of all of our Beauty and the Beast cards. 
Ace of Cups as Mrs. Potts and the Ace of Wands as Lumiere. Are you kidding? <laughs> amazing, amazing job. Then we have Lumiere and Cogsworth there as the Two of Swords, which is in its own way, like really, really nice. Cause those two, you know, they're bickering all the time. They were, <laughs> one goes this way, one goes the other way, but then also had that, that camaraderie, that friendship. Um, there's just a lot you can pull out of that particular card with those two. Um, the Nine of Swords as Chip. So this prompted me to rewatch the Beauty and the Beast film last weekend because I was like, did I miss something about that little guy? Like, was he regret and hopelessness under him? Um, I mean, there there were certainly moments, but I mean, that was an optimistic little teacup. <laughs> you know, he's, he's the guy that followed Belle to her house and really saved the day, um, you know, getting her to come back in the end. So... I don't know. I, I, like I said, would have been fine if this was not necessarily a Rider Waite style deck and you just threw that card there and I could read him as he was, which I will probably continue to do is just read him as the image. Um, but yeah, I found that it was an interesting choice for regret and hopelessness. And then the Ace of Swords, we have three of the Aces actually put, put out here um, with the Rose, um, the Enchanted Rose. Gorgeous. So again, like we had just seen um, with the last set of cards with Aladdin, we see um, Belle as the queen, the beast as the knight, and the pair of them as the king. So um, it's very, it's cool. It's very different. You know, this is not something I've seen in any other deck. Um, it's not just, you know, because it's a Disney deck, but, but the way that this has been structured, I think it's very neat. And Belle with her nose in a book as the Eight of Pentacles. Um, with passion and development being the words chosen there. I love that. I think that is perfect. So yes, um, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is how this deck reads. Yes, so uh, I've had a chance to do a number of readings with this and um, the first, I'd say three or four I did, let's just say the cards didn't really come out very favorably for the client I was reading for. Um, this is not news when you're reading for people that <laughs> you don't necessarily get the happiest cards all the time, but I was I was unsure about if they were able to tap in appropriately. Um, I actually got really excellent feedback on all of the readings that I had done using this deck. Um, you can, uh, to be honest, I found an incredible amount of depth with these cards, um, and myself, like I am a huge Disney fan, so I've seen with the exception of two, <laughs> I need to check this chick out. Um, but I have seen these movies hundreds and hundreds of times. I could probably recite them to you word by word. So when I see these cards show up on my table, especially in certain positional spreads, or even just the cards um, as they fall, I find they speak really, really well. So this is who I would recommend this deck to, is people who are other Disney, Disney fans, people who have seen these films, people who can take these characters for how much they have to offer because they are so dynamic. Like every, <laughs> every character has a story, right? They all have their own films. Some of them have multiple movies. Um, some of them are getting remakes <laughs> and, and new live action films, which in my opinion are all fantastic. Really enjoying what Disney's been coming out with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I have actually found that this deck reads very well. Again, with it being the little keywords on there. I don't necessarily use them myself, but they do they do really tend to tie back to what that card is trying to say in particular situations um, that you're using them for readings. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, it again, so another thing you also don't have to work with obviously is the, the notion of background because they are all just the characters. You know, you have little squiggles here and there, but there's no illustrated background with these cards. It's really based on the characters. So again, you want it to be, as I had mentioned in my, um, I believe it's the Lo Lover's Path deck when we were talking about the difference between divination and just storytelling or divination and regurgitating meaning or regurgitating what you've seen. But in this particular case, you know, you're not gonna sit there and, and pull a card and then start telling your client, oh, the entire story behind Cinderella, right? Like it's, it's hard to really even put into words. Um, how this how this particular deck works. But I, to be honest, I have done a number of readings with it. I think it reads really well. We've kind of walked through and I've shown you, in my opinion, what I might have changed, but you know, it's not my deck. <laughs> and I nevertheless recommend it. Um, I don't know if I talked about the cardstock. It's really excellent cardstock. Um, 
certainly on the thinner side, but ooh, it shuffles really, really well. Um, it's able to riffle shuffle quite well. Really nice size cards. Um, the cards are quite durable. I have bent a couple of them, but they haven't chipped or anything. You can, you know, ripple shuffle them no problem. <laughs> as I just toss all the cards over as I'm as I'm chatting about them. But yes, so again, um, highly recommend these cards to other Disney fans, people who love these films. Uh, I think you'll get a lot out of working with these cards. It's also neat to see kind of where the artist was coming from when when they decided to pick which character they would put in which cards. And again, the re repeated themes. On first glance, I, I kind of thought might have been a hindrance or a downside of the deck, but it does really offer a, another layer of connection between certain cards when they show up. But yes, um, I'd love to hear your comments in the chat or the comment section below. Like, what, what do you guys think of this deck? Do you agree with some of the things I had to say? Um, do you have any idea who that world card is? <laughs> if it's not the little prince, which I'm not, I'm not convinced that it is because that's, to my knowledge, that's not a Disney movie. Um, so if anyone has any idea who that card is, please let me know. Um, and yeah, I'd love to know, do we have other Disney fans in our, in our, <laughs> in our midst watching our videos? Um, and I will put the link below again, if, if this deck is still available, at the very least, I will link their Etsy shop. But anyways, um, yeah, so that, that'll wrap up the, this deck of the week. Thank you very much for tuning in and we will catch you at the next one.